You ready? On this week's episode of Sharing Our Life, we were flat out. It tested our capacity big time and just showed us what uh, we're capable of and what we're going to do better at this coming year. We are here today to talk about 2023, a year in review. As beginner homesteaders, what we did in our first year, maybe at the end we can review a couple lessons that we learned. Where do you want to start, my love? In starting with our homestead, the first, I guess, thing that really started us off was uh, my auntie and uncle. We had heard that they were selling some sheep, Katadin and Dorper, pregnant ewes. I called Bronson because at the time we were debating on what our next step was going to be. We were going to buy a van, renovate a, a bus, actually, and just travel around and just just, <laughs> just live life and uh, have an adventure that way. We bought the sheep and had zero infrastructure. Yeah, it was like a 10 by 30 dog kennel that we had, six foot high, six, eight foot uh, prairie panels. It's been an incredible budget. We, we didn't go backwards really at all through through putting all this together. Uh, we had booked a fishing trip not knowing when these sheep were coming and we tried to go out to the coast once every year, once every second year just to stock up on some fresh fish. We got home and within 24 hours the sheep started giving birth. We had one lamb out every other day for 14 days and we ended up with seven lambs all together, two males and five females. We found out we had cat and the only way we found out was because I seen one of them like crawling on Darcy's teat. We probably picked a couple hundred off of them a day. I didn't want to be that hands on with our animals. We want them to be a little bit more independent and natural and wild. I don't want their moms losing bond with their kids and then rejecting them. I think what saved us is they were in such tight quarters and they were sick for so long that after they were treated, they got in so much better health that they're all now very dependent on me. Very healthy sheep. Uh, they look great. Thank you. So I told her a number of times that I would like pigs just because I like eating pork. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. We're just saying yes at this point, basically. And uh, her friend Foot uh, offered a deal on a smaller one uh, with a sister, and uh, it was a good price. So we said, fuck it, let's get a couple pigs. Uh, and then the chickens came 13 days after that on the 28th of April. So, you know, we took on 32 birds, 12 sheep, and two pigs within a month with zero infrastructure by the way zero fencing no, no chicken coop yeah it was uh it was something <laughs> we do pretty good meat wise already more or less just ate wild meat but i really wanted to replace that chicken and pork the world was on fire our province was on fire our hometown was on fire it was sent to evacuate everybody left and i had a pony and a sheep on their property. We went on a rescue mission. It took us all night. But yeah, we didn't get home till like two or three in the morning. It was quite the drive. We had to back road it to Edson to get around the fire and back road it uh, to get back home. It should have been a three hour trip. It turned into a six hour trip. Hustle has been living her best yard pony life ever since. Yeah, she has been that sassy little bitch. Always looking for a way to escape. On May 7th, we pounded our first post. Tell us about your garden. We had plans to put in as much garden as we could. I had talked to my grandma about uh, using half of her garden, so I was able to put in a bunch of root vegetables over there, as well as we built 12 4 foot by 4 foot circular raised beds, and then I got a 4 by 6 raised bed and a 4 foot by 8 foot other raised bed that we were able to grow an immense amount of food. This gives me perspective of what somebody could do with a backyard. Like you could raise a year's worth of fruit and vegetables in your backyard if you were prepared and had a decent enough layout. Grow some stuff in your backyard if you're from the city and you're watching this. I tell you, it's going to save you an insane amount of money at the grocery store and it just tastes so much better. Moving on to June. 
Everything was growing. The opportunity came up to buy this property that we are now on. Finally signed the papers to our homestead. <laughs> the chicken coop build began. I built it pretty fancy. I, you know, I built a pretty swanky ceiling. I am a carpenter by trade. Uh, I just haven't done a whole ton of framing, so I wanted to practice for all the laundry list of projects to come kind of things. I think it's a great coop. I love it. It's looks fabulous. How is weaning? It's weaning day. Weaning was fine. Did you even notice? Yeah, not really. I still call them the kids. The kids just scream at me any ah! chance they get. Um, and that started when we weaned. July was just a busy month with picking mushrooms, harvesting the garden, building our shelters, weaning lambs, and also working on the chicken coop. Our holidays are generally Job, booked around dude. Yeah. fishing. Well Acquiring fish. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> And then we built two sheep shelters. How come we had to do that, baby? Because we bought some sheep with zero infrastructure. We don't have a barn. We basically tried to find a way just to keep them safe and out of the wind as cheaply as possible. Um, in August, our focus was maintenance, maintaining all that we had done so far and taken on. We also did get another batch of broiler chickens in August that we had to maintain through August, September, and in October is when I finally butchered them with the help of a good buddy of mine. And uh, we did 19 birds uh, through that time. September, we started getting eggs, eight eggs a day. So they started laying at three months, which is three months early. It took them a week to figure out the laying boxes. And they have not missed a day. Yeah, they're more or less uh, completely free range with a coop that they come back to every night. We got happy chickens and they produce really good eggs for us. You started bow hunting and basically went missing after September rolled around. And we got Gar. We picked Gar up and picked up a couple contractors who are on mouse duty. Phil and Carl. Yeah, their work is contract work. Um, if they are not working, they do not work here. And so far, it seems like they've been working. Able to spend lots of time bow hunting for myself was, was excellent. Just uh, super grateful for where we live and the hunting that we have access to. You know, if you include predators, we got seven or eight different big game species we can hunt pretty much right in our right in our backyard kind of thing the rest of november for me i hunted pretty much all of it i, I worked a few days in there too but uh hunting outfitter in uh, my spare time a little bit and uh, we were able to get one hunter out for a deer and a moose which we killed both of those suckers and uh, it was just a really great season i was able to kill a moose for us as well uh, with the tag i had the pigs went exactly how we needed them to go we got the most flack i think over the pigs by people just because they have a bad reputation um, but the pigs we had were really good so it was a really great experience for us yeah, a lot of fear around them digging out, um, but uh, they never did, not once. The only times they escaped was on our own <laughs> fault, leaving the damn gate open. So I just got home, and somehow she found out how to fucking get out again. And uh, December, we took a couple weeks and just decompressed a little bit as best we could, and we needed it. We were flat out, pretty much. We were flat out doing something every single day, which was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> got lots done got told to slow down a lot by a lot of different people we had a lot of goals we have a lot of goals for every year i think we're planning into 2026 right now like if you give me a suggestion of something to do and i like it put it on the list for 2026 what is a big lesson you learned early on in having ruminant animals and having a garden around make sure the gate is closed at all times yes. Yeah, fence it. The reason the ability to fence is ideal if you have ruminant animals is ruminants, they can do so much for you on your property, anywhere on your property, as long as it's fenced. We sold our lawnmower this year. We do not own a lawnmower. Do we even own a push lawnmower? Just a weed eater. Okay. It's ideal to be able to just let your animals out and graze and not have to keep an eye on them. I wasn't thinking when I ordered the birds. I ordered them online and I remember talking to a family member. They had told me that they had just got their 
broilers unsexed. I did that with the broilers and then I went to get the layers and I just subconsciously clicked unsexed on them too, not even thinking that I'm going to get some roosters with those lying hens. <laughs> Learning experience through and through and uh, yeah, it, it all worked out. Those eight hens that we have, those would have been enough to feed us through the winter. There's so much abundance around us, around you. If you are wanting to live a more natural, holistic life, eating whole foods that are farm fresh, locally grown, visit your local farmer's market. Use Google, go online, and see if you can find local farmers in your area and reach out to them and ask what they grow and how you can help or how you can get involved, vote with your dollars. That's how we will actually make impact in our food market, is if we quit spending our money at the grocery store and start applying that within the locally grown food market. And if you want to know more, visit our website at worthwhileliving.ca. Woo! Do you love me so much? So much. I'm just so excited to see where our plans and our actions take us in the years to come. Thank you for helping me create this life. We're grateful. Very grateful.